Hey, what's up everybody? Um, today we are taking a look at the RSST Genesis Style Atomizer. Let's take a look at what's going on under the hood. We're getting great vapor off of that. No hot spots, no wicking issues. We're looking good. Let's take a vape and see how it performs. And the clouds are there too, so for anyone who's a cloud chaser, this is not a bad Genesis atomizer for that. So, um, we're going to go into a little up close and personal mode with the RSST and see what's under the hood. Alright, we are up close and personal with the RSST. I have it broken down into all of its pieces here. Um, I also have a piece of stainless steel mesh, 400 stainless steel mesh. I have some 32 gauge canthal wire, which typically is a little high for me. I prefer a 28 or 30 gauge, but that's all I have right now, so I'll go with that. And I also have a 1 by 32 drill bit that I'm going to use for rolling my stainless steel around to get it started. All right. <clears throat> so the tank, you have a drip tip, Ming style, and then on the top cap, as you can see, I have slightly bored the air hole out from the standard size. I have a 5 by 64 drill bit hole in that. Um, here's the top deck, which has the ground screw in it, and it also has your wick hole right here and the fill hole right here and then the center one is where our post will go which will make the positive connection next we have the tank it is plastic so you might want to watch out for tank crackers I have not had any bad experiences with any tank cracking e-juice but I have not tried any cinnamon in it or anything like that so just beware and then we have the bottom base with the 510 threading in the bottom. All right. Then your center post. And that is the RSST. All right, first things first, you want to take your stainless steel mesh and you want to crease one side of it. I'll try to make sure I do all of this on camera so that you can see what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm making a small crease. See if you can see that. It's just a small bend on the bottom here. And now that I have that bend going this way, I have it folded over this way. Now I'm going to roll back the opposite way. The reason we put the crease in there so that once we start rolling, which now you can get out that small, small drill bit if you'd like. The reason we put the crease in there is so that it doesn't fold over itself and then crush the hole because we want to have some sort of airflow coming through there. And you should be able, once you get it about here, just to twist it up like that. Okay. That looks pretty good. Now it's stainless steel. You roll it one way, it gets tighter. If you roll it the other way, it does loosen. Now I want to make sure this is going to fit through my wick hole. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. That's butter. And I even have a little room on the side to make sure it helps with wicking. Okay. The next step with your stainless steel that we need is 
we need to torch it. And the reason you want to torch this is so that you build up a layer of carbon so that we get good flavor through our vape. Alright, and I have one of these lovely soldering irons that you can pick up at Radio Shack. Go see uh, Marty at the Greer location. Don't worry, I bought this seven years ago, so I'm not getting any money for that. But anyway, go see him. He's a good guy, good vapor. Um, if you put, take the soldering tip off and leave this in, you can actually just use a flame. And so now... My soldering iron has become a little butane torch. So what I want to do is take my pinchers of power and you just want it to glow and build a good layer up. Just like that. You can see I'm letting it glow. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but you want to make sure you have a glass of some water. So you can tink, drop it in, and then come back to torching. I'm going to let it glow one more time. And then that should be good. There, we're starting to get the glow again. Let it go all the way up. And we're good. <clears throat> now, cooled off and now we have a black stainless steel mesh wick and if you can see this tip I'm gonna go ahead and snip that end where it looks a little wonky so I'm just gonna take my scissors cut it at a 45 degree angle and that should have it just like that Now, the reason I cut that open at the bottom on the 45 is so it can help with wicking issues. Make sure that I'm just getting a good constant feed. And you can see there is a hole in the center from where we did our crease and then rolled back over it. Okay. Now, we're going to assemble the tank. Drip tip goes in the top cap. Okay. That's done off to the side, no big deal. Now, we're gonna take the base and the tank, slide it on top of each other. Then you take your top cap, or top deck, and tighten it down. Make sure it's good and snug. You don't wanna torque it. All right, now, if we're gonna stick the positive connection through, go ahead and twist that down. And you can see on the bottom here that the more I twist that in, the farther it sticks out. So if you are using this on a device that does not have an adjustable center pin, you want to back that out until it's about flush. You don't want to go around damaging any devices or any center pins that aren't floating maybe, and then they won't work with other tanks. So I'll leave it about right there. <clears throat> now go ahead and put this on a device so that I have some sort of working station and I'll be able to check the ohms and we're just going to set that up. Now, what I'm going to do is grab the top of my wick and my wire and I'm just going to pinch this in a little above halfway. I'd say I have like a third of my wick left 
I'm just hanging some of that off and pinching it. Now I'm just going to wrap. And I want to make sure that it is tight, but you don't want to start to mess your wick up. You want to keep your coils together. We're going two, three, four. And I'm just going to leave it at that. So, four wraps. And as you can see, they look pretty even. All right, so we have our wick um, with our wires coming off. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt to wick this up and see if we can't get it to fire. Okay, I wrap that around the negative and tighten it down. Take the top around the post, put it between the screw and the washer. If I can get in focus, I'm taking the canthal around and then I'm just going to mash down on the washer a little. Now we got it all set up, let's see how she's firing. Just want to pulse it a little bit. Let's, uh, let's get a little e-juice on here. Alright. And we are cooking. Doesn't look to have any hot spots. Once you, uh, once you apply your e-juice, if you're seeing red, you have a hot spot. And now I'm going to fill this up with some e juice. All right, we are back from up close mode with the RSST. And you can see I've filled it, I have trimmed my wires, and we have no wicking issues whatsoever. So to put the top cap on, you want to make sure you have that lined up with your wick, just like that. And when your tank gets about half empty, you will have to start to do a little bit of a tilty, tilty to make sure that it's wicking properly. Um, it's just the way the stainless steel works. That's why when you vape it, you want to make sure you keep the air hole and wick down facing you instead of facing away from you. Um, that keeps you from having any wicking issues or burnt hits, stuff like that. Let's see what we get out of it. Whole lot of vapor. Whole lot. Um, I'm getting amazing flavor right now. Um, I actually am not the biggest fan of stainless steel mesh in Genesis tanks. I prefer cotton, um, maybe even nano coil. But this is actually giving me excellent flavor um, and as you can see the vapor is there too so that's not a problem if there's any cloud chasers out there the flavor is just killer right now hold on let me take another couple vapes killer flavor oh my gosh killer flavor um, I really do appreciate everyone watching the video, whoever did. If you made it all the way through, thank you. Um, I hope I didn't waste too much of your time today. And uh, as for me and the RSST, we're out.